A railroad town is a concept, a location so tied into the railroad that it becomes a defining characteristic. Perhaps a majority of residents living there worked for the railroad. Perhaps most products were shipped by or received by train. Perhaps it was a location with engine facilities or had several lines radiating in different directions. Perhaps trains were so constant that they seemed to arrive and depart around the clock. Perhaps all the above. There were many railroad towns and cities in New England. Concord, New Hampshire, Springfield, Massachusetts. The list goes on and on. But if one was to find a single location to find the concept, a place whose geography, physical makeup, history, and culture was thoroughly tied to railroading, well, it just might be Bellows Falls, Vermont. Bellows Falls is actually a village, part of the town of Rockingham, Vermont. Located around its namesake falls on the Connecticut River, it occupies the Vermont side of the border with North Walpole, New Hampshire. Railroads first arrived here in 1849, when three lines all converged. The Sullivan County Railroad north towards Claremont, the Cheshire Railroad south towards South Ashburnham, Massachusetts, and the Rutland and Burlington Railroad running west to its namesake cities. The three were joined by the Vermont Valley Railroad in 1851, which came up along the river. Bellows Falls was now at the very heart of all these lines, two of which were major trunk lines to Canada. In order to reach the heart of Bellows Falls and its Union Station, the Vermont Valley Railroad had to tunnel under the town itself, making the Bellows Falls Tunnel one of the most striking features of the railroad here. Although its floor has been lowered several times over its lifespan, this 1850 constructed tunnel will never be widened. This has and continues to restrict the heights and widths of rail cars that can operate on this line. The railroads here had been consolidated into three main operators by 1900. The North-South Line, which had been the Vermont Valley Railroad and the Sullivan County, were now operated by both the Boston and Maine and the Central Vermont. The Cheshire Railroad became a B&M line, and the Rutland and Burlington became part of the Rutland Railroad. Bellows Falls Union Station and its freight depot were operated as joint facilities between the Rutland and the Boston and Maine. Destroyed by fire in 1921, the original two-story brick station was rebuilt in 1922 and 1923. Freight operations on the Connecticut River route were always interesting. There was plenty of traffic moving to and from Canada via both the central Vermont and also the Canadian Pacific, which connected with the B&M north of White River Junction. Bellows Falls was the most significant location in the area with several paper mills as well as manufacturing, enough to warrant around-the-clock switchers. It was also the connection to the B&M's Cheshire Branch, the Rutland Railroad, and also the Bellows Falls and Saxton's River Street Railway, which itself hauled a small amount of traffic. However, much of their freight traffic was transloaded within the confines of the Bellows Falls Freight House. At one time in its history, Bellows Falls could boast of being the largest producer of paper in the entire country. Bellows Falls customers included the Bellows Falls Cooperative Creamery, the Bragg Lumber Company, the Noise and Whitehill Company, Osgood's Garage, Robertson Paper, Moore and Thompson Paper, the Standard Paper Company, and the Wayne Feed Company. The Cheshire Branch, which headed southwest out of Bellows Falls towards Boston, was mainly used as an outlet for traffic flowing via the Rutland Railroad. In 1963, the Rutland's labor unions lost their final appeal to the Interstate Commerce Commission, and management closed the doors forever. In the wake of the Rutland's abandonment, the Green Mountain Railroad arose in 1964 and 1965 to take over operations that had been left stranded by the Rutland. However, much of the through freight traffic had been lost, as the Rutland's through route to New York was also lost. The main purpose of the Cheshire up to its abandonment in 1972 was to handle cars that were too tall or too wide to fit through the Bellows Falls Tunnel. Rodney P. Cohen recounted the importance of creameries and milk traffic to the railroad scene in Bellows Falls. There were two creameries at Bellows Falls. One, which was just east of the depot, bottled milk for the first national stores. It shipped its milk already bottled and gave the railroad five cars a day. One car went down on Cheshire Branch train 5510, 
The other four went down on train 5500. The other creamery was located across the river on the back track in Walpole. This track connected the Cheshire Branch and the Connecticut River line. It was a Whiting Milk Company plant and it shipped its milk out in tank cars. In 1960, F. Nelson Blount, millionaire seafood industrialist and famed steam railroading enthusiast, purchased the Boston and Maine engine facility in North Walpole, right across the river from Bellows Falls. From 1961 onward, he began moving his private railroad collection, one of the largest ever assembled, up here with plans to open Steamtown USA, a museum dedicated to the passing steam era. After a false start in 1962 attempting to open in Keene, New Hampshire, Blount opened his museum in North Walpole in 1963 before negotiating with Vermont's governor, Philip Hoff, to move to Bellows Falls. Operations in Vermont of Steamtown USA and the accompanying Monadnock Steamtown and Northern Railroad began in 1964 and continued here in Bellows Falls until the museum moved to Scranton, Pennsylvania between 1983 and 1985. The 1960s would bring some significant changes for the Connecticut River route of the Boston and Maine and the Central Vermont. Passenger service declined with the B&M ending passenger service in 1966, although Amtrak would restore service in 72 with its Montrealer between Washington DC and Montreal. The Montrealer operated from 1972 until 1987, and again from 1989 to 1995. Since 1995, passenger service has been provided with Amtrak's Vermonter, which terminates at St. Albans, Vermont. The end of the classic era of Connecticut River railroading came about in the early 1980s when Guilford Transportation purchased the Boston and Maine. Guilford had already acquired the Maine Central Railroad and was looking to expand its budding empire. In short order, Guilford also purchased the Delaware and Hudson, and the locomotives from all three railroads began to mix with those of Central Vermont and Canadian Pacific. Train operations continued as they had been for a short while, and for a time, all the colorful locomotive lash-ups were quite exciting to see. Soon, unfortunately, changes came about that would radically alter the face of the Con River line. Despite the shifts in trains and trackage levels, Bellows Falls is still very much a railroad town and one of the busiest locations in this part of New England. In 1995, the Central Vermont was acquired by Rail America and thus began the New England Central Railroad, later absorbed as a subsidiary of Genesee and Wyoming. Today, New England Central operates road freights through Bellows Falls, as well as a local freight, which comes down from White River Junction. The Green Mountain Railroad was incorporated into the Vermont rail system, which boasts a heavy presence here in Bellows Falls and daily freights on their line to Rutland. The old Steamtown property, now the Riverside Reload, is bristling with freight customers and switched daily by Vermont Rail. The B&M side of things here in town became part of Guilford Rail System and later Pan Am Railways before becoming part of CSX Transportation and later rolled into the Berkshire and Eastern System earlier this year. Itself a subsidiary of Genesee and Wyoming, Berkshire and Eastern will continue to serve the old B&M tracks through town. They operate local freights up from East Deerfield, Massachusetts to interchange with both Vermont Railway and New England Central. Finally, the old Union Station here in downtown Bellows Falls sees daily service, and the legacy of passenger rail on the Con River line still rings true when Amtrak's Vermonter pulls into town twice a day.